wasn't sure how his Georgia team was going to react to their subpar performance against Vanderbilt. Often a team will come back with fire in their eyes. <laughs> the last time the Georgia had a problem with Vanderbilt was back in 1973. They lost to him in Nashville, came back to Athens, and lost to Kentucky. So you never really know if your football team's ready to play. But these two teams are well prepared. They're both coached by men that stress hard work and discipline, and you can bet they're going to put out a performance that uh, they'll be proud of. Worley with a very short kickoff coming down at the 21-yard line. Picking it off is Georgia tight end Troy Sadowski, number 87 at the 21. So I guess you work that out either way. You can either kick it out of the end zone at the 20 or pop it up to the tight end. The Georgia starting backfield, James Jackson, who's thrown two touchdown passes, but effective running the ball. Worley and McCluskey will start. You'll also see Henderson at fullback. Hockaday and Osborne starting at the split end position. For the offensive line for the University of Georgia, Troy Sadowski, the tight end at the bottom of your screen. Peter Anderson having an exceptional all-star year at center for Georgia. Vince Dooley likes to call him the bell cow. Where he goes, the others will follow. Here's the pitch to Worley. Drives across the 25 with the 26-yard line, and that Kentucky eight-man front gets tested with the Georgia running game right off the top. And there is the Kentucky defensive alignment for yourself. You see that you have Reese Wilkins, Stubbs, Dumbled, and the down lineman. They have some depth there, too. The outside linebackers, they're called defensive ends by Kentucky, but play the same position, are Mazza and Williams. You saw the inside backers. Very good Larry Smith at making the tackle. And the defensive backfield, Mays, Hairston, and Douglas. We'll also see a lot of Carmichael Caldwell back there. And here's McCluskey, the fullback, out to the 24-yard line at the University of Georgia first down. Georgia started right off the bat, Bob, with an unbalanced line. They shifted the tight end to the wide side of the field, ran to it. That time, both split receivers down to the wide side of the field, ran back to the tight end into the sideline. Kentucky is not that big up front. They're starting John uh, Duckworth in there. Excuse me, Don Duckworth, and he's just 5'9", 210 pounds playing tackle for him. First down, 10 Georgia from the 34-yard line, running the ball again. Just across the 35 of the 36 goes fullback David McCluskey, who is a junior from Rome, Georgia, wearing number 43, 6'1", 220 pounds, and he shares time with 6'2", 210 freshman Keith Henderson. You'll see Henderson coming in shortly, probably, at the fullback position for the Bulldogs. Second down, 8 from the 36-yard line. Georgia and Kentucky, both teams with one loss in the SEC. The loser here can virtually say so long to the season because never before has two losses won the SEC. Jackson throwing and it's caught. By number 24, Cassius Osborne. Inside Kentucky territory at the 46-yard line of the Wildcats. 18-yard gain. See James Jackson rolling to his left. Osborne coming down doing a curl. I think initially he's looking for Sadowski in the flat. Can't get it to him. Makes a nice throw into the open area. Good catch by Cassius. Freshman number 45, Chris Chenault, the linebacker, had an opportunity to bat it down. Couldn't get the arm up fast enough. On the first down, Jackson under pressure. It's picked off with the ball number six, Russell Hairston, to the 40-yard line of the Bulldogs. With a big turnover, Russell Hairston of the Kentucky Wildcats. Bob, Bob, this is the Reed screen. You're going to see the linemen, see Anderson and Stevens pulling out to the left. They're setting up the screen. And he was, Jackson was reading the linebacker. As the linebacker, Chenault, reacted to the screen, he dumped it to Sadowski. But Russell Harrison, alert football from the weak safety position, was reading Jackson all the way for the interception. That's Harrison's fourth interception. And on the first down, the pass is complete from Dooley to number 25 running back Mark Logan to the 36-yard line of Georgia. And there's the Kentucky offense. Dooley, the sophomore quarterback. Logan and Derry in the backfield. Higgs will trade off with Logan. Pitts and Burbage starting at the wide-out positions. Mark Wheeler, the tight end. And that offensive line, experienced and pretty good, but they've been struggling some, Tim Foley. Yeah, they have, Bob. And I think that uh, I think we can effectively, though, throw out that performance last week. I don't think we want to wait that... Uh, the game that they played against LSU, I don't think that's their standard. Here is Dooley giving off to 25. Logan getting nowhere. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Possibly a loss. Making the tackle 99, Jake Richardson. And let's take a look at the Georgia defensive line. Ruff, Stewart, Williams, Richardson, Water. They're banged up some in there. Mitchell and Brantley, excellent middle linebackers. Real junkyard dogs, according to Vince Dooley. John Little, the excellent rover in the backfield of Moss and Willis on the corners. And Tony Flack at safety. That's because Miles Davis, the normal safety, is injured for Georgia. 
This is third down, six from the 36. Dooley, it's almost picked off and then dropped by John Little. Almost a you-take-it-I-got-it play there. It was intended for Logan. Little knocked the ball down, could not hold on to it. After Ransdell went down against Clemson on the first play, Dooley came in, led the Kentucky uh, Wildcats to 26 points against Clemson, another 33 points against Mississippi State. Last week, just a tragic performance. Jerry Eisman, the offensive coordinator, said they looked like 11 sheep on offense. They couldn't get anything going. And now, what has to happen here is you have to kind of reconstruct the confidence of a young quarterback. And that's, that was the task of Jerry Eisman and the coaches this year. So it was fourth this down. Week. Kentucky, however, decided to call timeout because I think they're going to attempt a field goal here. We'll be right back. This is Turner Network Television. So Kentucky is going to attempt a field goal here. It will be a 54-yard attempt by Joe Worley. He leads the SEC in field goals, averaging about 2.17 per game. His longest this year is 48 yards. He kicked against Bowling Green. That's plenty of foot. I don't know if it's got the distance or not. No, it's substantially short. There is a stiff wind here at Sanford Stadium. Whether that had an effect on the kick or not, I don't know. But it worked out fortunately for the Georgia Bulldogs because they will now take over at the 36-yard line. You see, it is a brisk wind, and I believe it was blowing into the face of Jeff Worley, the kicker. It came up short. We remain scoreless with 11.45 to go. Quarter number one from Sanford Stadium. The Bulldogs and the Wildcats. Georgia was driving, and James Jackson threw an interception. Kentucky could not convert, missed the field goal attempt. Now in the backfield for Georgia, both the freshmen, Tim Worley at tailback and Keith Henderson from Cartersville, Georgia, is the fullback for the Bulldogs. They've got an unbalanced alignment right now, Bob. Let's see if Sadowski shifts back to the weak side. Sadowski, number 87, the tight end, over on the right side of your screen. And it's a quick handoff right up the middle to the fullback, Keith Henderson. Henderson drives near the 40-yard line to the 39, tackled by 54, Reese, and number 40, Larry Smith. And there are two many football players better than those two defensively. Reese, 54, and Smith, 40. We'll see a lot of them today, Tim. Reese had a couple of sacks last week against LSU. Larry Smith was having a great year last year as a linebacker, hurt his knee against Mississippi State, but they say he's doing fine this year. Second down, seven Georgia from the 39 of the Bulldogs. Jackson with a good speed and a good arm. Going long. Has Hockaday deep. Can't get him back to the 15-yard line. So Jimmy Hockaday, the senior from Nashville, was deep, but just was covered pretty well. Pass goes incomplete. There is a penalty marker on the flag at the line of scrimmage. Illegal receiver downfield is going to be the call against Georgia. You know, you just saw James Jackson's statistics for throwing the football this year. That's his yearly statistics. We have to keep reminding people that he is 27 of 62 coming into this game. That's like Robbie Bosco at BYU for one game. Right. You know, <laughs> when we first talked to Vince Dooley this year before the Baylor game, he said the strongest part of his Georgia offense was his receiver core, and that's like... Edwards out at BYU saying that the best thing about his offense is their fullback. <laughs> it's just, it so what? Yeah, right. It just didn't sound right. But uh, Georgia has developed this running game. They've got the two freshmen doing a good job, and McCluskey is tough whenever he's carrying the ball. There's the signal. Loss of down. Ineligible receiver downfield. Robert I.A. is the official today, the referee. It'll be third down 12, Georgia, from the 34. Worley and McCluskey now in the backfield for Georgia. McCluskey and Henderson been trading at fullback position. Georgia in a slot right formation on third down 12. It's complete to Worley. It's a nice move to avoid the tackle. First down and more to the 45-yard line just outside the 45 of Kentucky. Chenault and Smith combining on the tackle. 20-yard pass completion and look at the acceleration of Worley. Georgia has all three of its receivers on the right side of the field. The tackle is not eligible back to the weak side. As a result, Kentucky sucked way over to the wide side, leading, leaving Brian Williams by himself to fight those three blockers. Couldn't get the job done. First down, Georgia. James Jackson hands off to the first man on the option. Gets it inside the 45 to the 43-yard line of Kentucky. Larry Smith, number 40, with the tackle. Georgia likes that quick opener with a fullback against this kind of front, Tim. Yes they, yes, they do. And McCluskey's going to be reading the block of the strong guard. We'll show you that as the game develops. If the guard gets his hat to the outside of that down lineman, he's going to stay with it. If he, if he can't get his hat out there, he's going to cut it back against the grain. Second down, six from the 43. In motion, Cassius Osborne, number 24. 
Hand off to the tailback, Warley. And there's that wide tackle six. They penetrate a little bit, but mainly they just stretch it out. And Brian Williams gets the tackle. The defensive right end, he's only 5'10", 210 pounds. That man there, 38, is a real load. But watch this Kentucky defensive unit at work. See that wide tackle six working. Taking the man on, you see Strozier fighting there with uh, number 99. Smith fills the hole, drives the back to the outside, no gain. Third down five, splitting out to the top of your screen and out of your pictures, Jimmy Hockaday. Jackson wants to throw it if he can, has the time. He was looking for Osborne incomplete. Down around the 30-yard line, and it will be fourth down for Georgia. Line of scrimmage is about the 40-yard line, and Georgia will punt the football. And in will come freshman punter Chris Carpenter, who frankly has struggled for Georgia this year. He's not having the kind of year that uh, most folks thought he would, but remember he is a young man, an outstanding athlete, an exceptional pitcher also on the Georgia football, on baseball team. So Chris Carpenter, and there is Brian Williams, who I think is the only defensive end who returns punts. That's correct, and it is kind of unusual that you'll see John Little back there in that situation for Georgia sometime, and in their scheme could be called a defensive end, too. Carpenter will bring rain with that one. Great hang time. Going to come down inside the 15 and stop by Georgia at the 16. Little and Williams, by the way, are one and two in the conference in returning punts, but Williams gets no opportunity on good hang time from freshman Chris Carpenter. We'll be back to Sanford Stadium right after this. When you deserve the best, yeah. Standing out. Apart from all the rest, yeah. Of all the discerning people who buy Buicks more by century than any other. Kentucky beat Georgia was in 1977 here in Athens, and it was really a clobbering 33 to nothing. And the big key in that game was Prince Charles of Great Britain was here to watch the game. Derek Ramsey led the trouncing, the Bulldogs, by Kentucky. That pass incomplete intended for Eric Pitts. I choose to believe that Kevin Dooley threw that one away. A good job of coverage by the Georgia secondary. They were ready for that play action pass, and uh, there was no room to stick it in there. Dooley came into the game 41 out of 80. Three interceptions, two touchdowns. Thus far today, one out of three for only four yards. Now, 22 Higgs, the tailback for Kentucky. 44, Deary is the fullback. Play fake by Dooley. It's batted in the air. Running to try to get it was Bill Mitchell, 56, the linebacker, but it was tipped by 57, Kenny Sims. 6'3, 265. Talking to, talking to Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator for Georgia, as you watch this kind of a counteraction play pass, he's trying to get the ball to Derry in the flat. Bill Lewis said that he's charted Kentucky's offense with Ransdell and without Ransdell. Pretty much the same percentages hold true, uh, regardless of the quarterback. and. It even goes beyond this year. The percentages hold true to their scouting report last year. Third down 10 from the 16-yard line. Not much on that one either. Out to the 17-yard line goes number 22, Mark Higgs, the sophomore from Owensbury, Kentucky. Owensboro, Kentucky. And Kentucky's going to have to punt the ball. Uh, we'll have to turn it over again. They attempted a 54-yard field goal last time. You can see Kentucky not getting much yardage. That's what happened in that LSU game last week, but it took LSU to the final minute of the game to get the ball into the actual end zone. Here is Jay Tesser, who's a freshman punter, punting into the wind. It's going to hold up. Georgia's, oh, it gets a good Kentucky bounce inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. So a good Kentucky bounce for freshman Jay Tesser, who gets more out of it than he had thought against the win. 46-yard punt, and there the Bulldogs will take over again with 8.31 to go. Quarter number one. Apologize for those, and we'll clear them up as rapidly as possible. In the meantime, Tim, you can just talk louder, right? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> if I mispronounce anything, it's because of the microphone. That's right. <laughs> Lars Tate, number 32, and number 30, Keith Henderson, in the backfield for Georgia. Jackson on the keeper. About five yards. Make it about four across the 40 to the 42. Tackled by 40, Larry Smith. We mentioned number 32, Lars Tate, who had just gone into the game for Georgia. He's playing hurt, has a broken finger on his hand, and he also re-injured it again this week in practice when he hit somebody in the helmet in the scrimmage. So how effective Tate can be out of the fullback position remains to be seen, but Vince Dooley has his fingers crossed. Vince Dooley gave a little talk last night at the uh, 1975 uh, Georgia Cotton Bowl team reunion. James Jackson on second down six from the 42. Pitches to Tate. 
Eight across the 45 to the 47. About a yard short of the first down. Tipped up by the inside linebacker, freshman number 45, Chris Chenault from Lexington. One thing George has been doing all year long, Bob, is rotating these backs. They had about six of them that they were working with, and, and because of some injuries, they were limited into the to the, uh, the amount of backs they could use last week. And you see Chris Chenault on the ground there. Looks like he banged his arm up uh, on that play. I think may, maybe his right arm. There have Jeff Kramer and Don Urano are the backup linebackers there, and you don't lose a whole lot with those two, Tim, if they do have to come in for the freshman. I, as a matter of fact, I think this was Chenault's first start. He'd been playing real That's well, correct. been playing every week, and uh, first start this week. And Jeff Kramer is going to come in. There you are when he gets hurt. You see him pop that arm there against those... Ooh. Uh, might you have know, been he his player. That, yeah, that's right, and he might have pinched the nerve in his neck. Looked like his neck got driven by, driven over a little bit. Well, we hope that young man's okay. Doesn't look to be too serious. It'll be third down about one from the 47-yard line of Georgia. Scoreless game, 7.30 to go. Quarter number one from Sanford Stadium. Worley, McCluskey, Henderson all in the backfield. Here's Jackson. Blinding speed to the 37-yard line. First down, Bulldog. Carmichael Caldwell, number 11 with the stop. And that's what Jackson brings to the game. Short yardage play. Of course, the defense attacking the spot. Worley does a nice job faking, and here comes Jackson out all by himself. Kind of left Steve Mass out there on an island because he had to protect against the pitch and also try to get to Jackson. Jackson had rushed for 229 yards coming into this game. Got 18 on that one, has 21 on the day now on the first down, Georgia. Here's Lars Tate inside the 35 to the 33-yard line of Kentucky. Steve Mazza, 38, the defensive end with the stop. First down is always an important down, Bob, but I think it's probably more important for Georgia than most football teams. If Vanderbilt, if it's third and 10, and you're Vanderbilt, something that you're used to seeing, it doesn't shake you up. Georgia wants to stay out of those must-pass situations. And uh, when they get in them, they have a problem. It is second down six from the 33. And the quick opener gets the first down for Georgia. That's Keith Henderson, the freshman. Georgia sixth in the nation in running the football against this wide tackle six defense of Kentucky. They are fourth in the nation in stopping it. One reason is number six, Russell Hairston. And Russell Hairston has been playing fine football. He's recovered three fumbles, intercepted three passes, been in on a lot of tackles, plays a lot closer to the line of scrimmage than most weak safeties. Has an interception in this game. And Georgia with some confusion on the line. Looked like uh, somebody on the left side, maybe Ronnie Smith, the tight end, moved. And the penalty marker is down. Illegal procedure, and it'll be a five-yard penalty. Ronnie Smith, number 88, the man who moved. And Dooley gra grabs a blade of grass. <laughs> it's about the time you're looking around for a head coach, you're looking for somebody to punch. You got a good drive going and a, a senseless little pop like that. Now it's first and 15, and we talked about trying to stay out, stay out of passing situations. Well, this is one. This is the sixth play of this drive. The first five have all been on the ground. This one's going to stay on the ground, too. Jackson gets back to five and about five more down near the 20-yard line. Carmichael Caldwell with the stop. And Georgia's leading rusher, once again, is going to be James Jackson. He has 29 and three carries so far. Seemed to be a little confusion on the Kentucky defense about who's got containment. That time there was no one there. There was no one to option. Jackson came open around the end clean, and he had the, the trail back was still there. Second down six for James Jackson and the Bulldogs. In motion is Freddie Lane. Hand off to the fullback. That's Keith Henderson. To the five-yard line. First down, Georgia. Caldwell with the stop again. And the Bulldogs have kept it on the ground this entire drive effectively against Kentucky. You see more and more of that. And look at this quickness by the freshman fullback. He looks for that lane back to the weak side, makes a nice cut there, and almost loses Carmichael Caldwell, showing good quickness for a big man. 16 yards on that ramble. Georgia with her power offense now. McCluskey, Henderson, and Tate in the backfield. First and goal from the five. Jackson. Touchdown, Bulldog. That's the sixth touchdown of the year rushing the ball for James Jackson. 
Working on the left side of the Kentucky defense. Fakes it to Lars Tate. Nice job by the tailback. Just nobody there to take the quarterback. Touchdown. Good job of Jackson sticking it in there. Here's Crumbly for the point after. And Jim, they kept it on the ground all the way on that drive. Mainly, they, mainly James just kept calling his number. Right. Point after by Crumley is good, and with five minutes, six seconds remaining in quarter number one from Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, Bulldogs seven, Wildcats of Kentucky, nothing. A great block by Strozier and Sadowski. Good fake by the tailback. Wilkins trying to fight to get there. Sadowski drove off the containment, allowing Jackson to fight his way for six. He lost his helmet, as you saw there, and banged up his right ear a little bit, but James Jackson seems to be okay on the sideline. I don't think there was an injury. It's Burbage and Logan back deep to receive for Kentucky. Logan 25, Burbage number four. There's Logan deep in his end zone, and Burbage says, uh-uh, no way this time, and Kentucky will bring it up for a touchback to the 20-yard line. There's a scoring play, 62 yards all on the ground in eight plays, three minutes, 29 seconds. All on the ground. Georgia fans are used to seeing that. That'd be a good show. How about uh, that could be a good uh, title for the Georgia highlights. All on the ground. I understand here at Sanford Stadium that the, the mail and the date gets a kiss for every point the Bulldogs score. So it can be an exciting yeah, afternoon or sometimes a little boring. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Deary the fullback. First down, Kentucky. Out to the 34-yard line comes Chris Deary. Tony Flack with a tackle. Deary is tied for the lead in receptions with Kentucky. They like to throw the ball to him. He's the kind of player you love to have on your football team. Unselfish. They don't give him the ball much. And, but they've discovered him as a receiver about midway through last year. And I believe this is his 16th catch. Deary the fullback. Good blocker, too. They pitch to 25. Mark Logan needs a block. Gets a little bit, about five yards out near the 40-yard line. Michael Willis, number 16 of Georgia, with the tackle. Mark Logan is the junior in what they call the Marks Brothers backfield, and he swaps off with 22 Higgs, who's coming into the game right now. Ken Petroviak, Kentucky's fine center, is down on the field out there at about the 37-yard line. They're walking him around a little bit. Another Kentucky player is down also. Petroviak, you see, walking. Back up to Kroviak is number 57, Dermonte Dawson. Let's see who that is that's down. That is number four, Cornell Burbage. Burbage is the other man who's tied for the lead in receptions for Kentucky. They can ill afford to lose him if they go to the air. And he's somewhat of an atypical receiver. He gets his nose dirty. He gets in there and starts knocking people around on running plays. Got a lot of courage, good leadership ability. And uh, they knew, do need to have people like him on the field, especially in the absence of Ramsdell. We mentioned Bill Ramsdell, Kentucky's starting quarterback, the junior, who's really the leader of the team, was injured against Clemson. He has made this trip. He had a collapsed lung and broken ribs, slightly cracked ribs. He is here. We doubt that he'll see action in the game. Second down for Kentucky from the 40-yard line. Number 19 is Cisco Bryan in motion. Here's Higgs. Not much this time. Higgs only 5'7", 190. And he was stacked up there by big 6'1", 220, Steve Boswell, number 44 for the Bulldogs. One of the junkyard dog linebackers, Steve Boswell. See 56, Billy Mitchell. 44, Steve Boswell's in there for Brantley right now. Just sits in the hole and takes on the running back. He's just uh, those three guys, Brantley, Boswell, and Mitchell, really at the heart of this Georgia defense. Third down three, Kentucky from the 41-yard line of the Wildcats. Dooley to throw. Some pressure. Gets a good block. Runs for the first down. Out to the 46-yard line goes sophomore Kevin Dooley, who rarely runs the football. Dooley has only 15 yards coming into this game. There's Ransel, who has the collapsed lung, and you see that outfit, and he's trying to lead from the sideline. <laughs> He's kind of a John Wayne type of fella. If things aren't going right in the football game, Rams will grab a hold of a lineman and slap him upside the head and say, let's get going. He's that kind of fella. Dooley's a little bit more quiet and tries to lead uh, through his performance. I like to say he's a defensive back type of quarterback, meaning I'm complimenting him. On the first down, Higgs nowhere. Maybe a loss of a yard hit by 99, 260 pounds worth of Jake Richardson. And as we said, Dooley played well against Clemson and well against Mississippi State. But he took a shot in the Clemson game. They put 12 stitches in his chin. 
dirt early in the LSU game he was throwing a screen pass and somebody stuck a helmet right underneath the chin opened it up again so uh, it was all he could do to take the ball from the center for a while there during that football game this will be second down 10 Kentucky with a lot of pre snap motion now they're right into that pro set and Dooley's gonna throw it four man rush by Georgia incomplete good coverage by Boswell out at the 50 yard line they tried to get it to Mark Logan but Boswell 44 was all over him and Kevin Dooley now is two out of six for only 18 yards throwing the ball for Kentucky once again the Wildcats stammering on offense unable to get much going and understand too Kentucky is always it's they're the type of team they're gonna beat you with defense in the kicking game they're never going to really overpower you with offense as you were pointing out earlier, Tim, they did score some points against Clemson, however, and against Mississippi State. Yeah, Mississippi State's got a good defense. 33 points on them is, is no easy trick. On third down, 10, Kevin Dooley from his 40. Under pressure, steps in there and wings it. It's complete for the first down at the 40 to 83. Eric Pitts, and there's a penalty marker down. Very poised performance by 18 sophomore Kevin Dooley. Pressure from Georgia. He stepped up in the pocket and rifled it to Eric Pitts, the junior from Lima, Ohio. Now, the penalty marker was in the Georgia defensive backfield. It was complete for a first down. Here's Robert Ayer. Pass interference against Kentucky. That'll nullify a fine performance by Dooley. Let's see if they call it on Eric Pitts there. I think we're going to show you John Little working against Eric Pitts. He was sure open. <laughs> yeah. It was man-to-man -man underneath. They played a three-deep zone behind it. Doesn't look like it. Well, Pitts worked his way clear underneath Little. Little, the idea there is stay on that inside hip. Pitts worked inside of him, and a uh, nice throw by Dooley. And so the guilty party... Will go unreprimanded at least on national tv how about our producer skip ellison said he thought he heard them say illegal man downfield the indication was pass interference but we'll check on what that penalty was at any rate kentucky has to punt comes to john little who fair catches it at his own 32 yard line and with 219 to go in quarter number one georgia leads in the game seven and up Kentucky, it was in fact pass interference kentucky punted the football georgia has it on the fair catch from little first and ten at their own 32. James Jackson tucks it in got a wall over here he has the first down and that's about all he got out of bounds with the ball in his life at the 44 yard line as David Johnson was coming at him full speed ahead but James Jackson is giving Kentucky all kinds of headaches today whenever you have a quarterback with his ability Bob it just uh, gives you a real containment problem the headache for the people in the secondary try, trying to stay with the receivers as Jackson buys more time. It's also a problem for the linebackers. They don't know where they get depth or to sit on the quarterback. First down 10 from the 44-yard line, Georgia. Hand off to the tailback. And Tim Worley fumbles the ball. And it is Kentucky ball at the 46-yard line. Number 37, Barry Alexander with a big play for the Wildcats. And now Georgia has turned the ball over to Kentucky twice. Watch this again. Here's freshman Tim Worley, the tailback. Stevens and Strozier working. And the ball just pops out. Jerry Reese seemed to have knocked it out. Got another angle here. Yep, Reese got it coming from the right side. So a good break for the Wildcats, trailing Georgia 7-0 with 1.59 to go quarter number one. First down 10 at the Georgia 47-yard line. Dooley. Time to throw. Couldn't decide whether to go to 80. Mark Wheeler or number four, Cornell Burbage, threw it in between both of them and incomplete. It'll be second down 10. And Kevin Dooley is two out of eight for 18 yards. Kentucky continues to struggle offensively, even though they've had a couple of good breaks on turnovers right out here at midfield. Well, as always, George is well prepared on defense. And once again, Kentucky tried to get him with a little play action. Jerry Eisman trying to get Kentucky's defense uh, on a blitz. Didn't work that time. Second down 10 from the 47. Dooley. Overthrows his fullback, Chris Derry. Derry stumbled a bit, but I think the ball was overthrown anyway. So Dooley really struggling here. Two out of nine now. 
This will bring up third and long, third down ten, and the Bulldogs sure like to send the kitchen sink on these kind of situations. <laughs> they do, don't they? I was watching the film last week, uh, spending some time in uh, Joe Tereshinsky's office, uh, one of the Georgia coaches, watching the film of the Georgia Vanderbilt game last year. They blitzed nine out of the last ten plays against Vanderbilt. Let's see what happens here. Not blitzing. Four-man rush. Dooley under pressure. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of Tim Jones. He was open for what would have been a big first down and simply did not catch the ball. Not Dooley's fault on that one for sure. Look like Henry Williams breaks clean right up the middle. You see Harris working. Here comes Williams right up the gut. Dooley sees it and lets this one go. Ducks. Jones goes up in the middle and just can't hold it. Kentucky has to make those plays. Freshman Jay Tesser to punt. Takes a snap at his own 40. Little is back the number one punt returner in the league. Kentucky with all kinds of opportunities to move the ball have been ineffective in trailing the game seven to nothing. Clock ticking down, final seconds of the first quarter. I'm not even sure this punt will take place from this end of the field. Two, one, down to double. And now his punter's gonna be standing in his own end zone and punting it into the wind. See that big disparity in rushing yardage of these two teams. It's a brisk wind here today also, blowing right in the face of Chris Carpenter. Freshman gets off a fair punt, certainly not a good one. It's going to remain inside Georgia territory, goes out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Excellent point on that one. And, you know, we talk about the center for Georgia, Peter Anderson. He not only is a fine center, he's a great running back, a great scorer. He leads Georgia centers in scoring. As a matter of fact, he scored against Clemson. We asked him about it when he fell on a fumble in the end zone. Well, during that play, uh, we were just running our basic pullback dive, which has been a very successful play for us all year. And uh, as uh, the fullback was coming across the line, Clemson was able to really lay some good wood on him, and he coughed up the ball. And I was fortunate enough to see the ball immediately, and I scrambled right on it. It certainly was one of the most thrilling things that has happened to me in my career here. And that play goes for almost no yardage. Stop maybe about a yard short. Calvin Russ making the tackle of Chris Derry, the receiver. Peter Anderson's quite a kid. He just uh, is really a stabilizing force in that offensive line. He knows the assignments of every player. Played centers, played guard. He's kind of a Yankee playing on this Bulldog team down from New Jersey. It'll be second down, 11 from the 48-yard line. Kentucky trailing Georgia, 7-0 in motion. He is number four, Burbage. Newly rolling. Plenty of time to throw this time. And it's complete. Seven or eight yards. And then out of bounds at the 39 goes Mark Logan. Gary Mark. Uh, Gary Moss chasing Logan out of bounds. Some of the coaches instructing Dooley from the sideline to get up there and threaten that corner. Turn it upfield. Approach that line scrimmage. What happens then is the linebackers start becoming concerned about the quarterback running the football they'll leave the man they're covering and open the man up downfield it'll be third down two Kentucky from the 39 of Georgia 1404 to go quarter number two motion comes Burbage and off Logan driving to the 35 yard line and that's the deepest penetration of the ball game for the University of Kentucky Good job by Bozick and Myers. Troviak's back in the game. Kentucky's got a good offensive line. A lot of playing experience there. Vern Johnson, Brad Myers, Troviak, Rick, Rick Wine, and uh, Richie. First and ten from the 35 of the Bulldogs. Here's Mark Higgs. Hit in the backfield and hauled down. Excellent defensive play at the 37-yard line by number 59, Greg Muddy Waters. Senior from Swainsboro. Waters has had a fine year this year. Seven sacks. Georgia's best pass rusher from that outside position. That was a little bit of a... Uh, <laughs> we won't tell him, Muddy. <laughs> we'll file that one. Little face mask there. Didn't last long. <laughs> we won't tell. It's not our job to blow the whistle. Second down 11 from the 36. Just go Bryant in motion for the Wildcats. Boom. Hit in the backfield again, but he broke the tackle. Here goes Higgs. Big trouble. As a matter of fact, they've blown this one dead. 
<laughs> they may have said he was in the grass long enough for the whistle. That was Waters again who hit him in the backfield. An interesting play. They may have said that Waters simply held on long enough for the play to have been over. Now it's going to be third down 15 Kentucky and this Wildcat offense just can't get anything. Logan's rush for 10 yards. Higgs minus three. Dooley four and folks that's it offensively for Kentucky trying to run the football. Dooley under pressure. It's Waters again. Greg Waters playing like a man possessed. Dooley goes down. Waters has two straight tackles and a sack. Henry Harris was also back there for Georgia. 52, a loss of 11. You come from the, the right side of your screen. You see Harris fighting free up the middle. Nope. And there comes Greg Muddy Waters. Can't really hang on. Harris there to clean up. That's quite a series for Greg Waters. In three plays, Kentucky lost 15 yards. Tesser to punt with the win. Going to carry possibly into the end zone. Little catches it and is hauled down. He got out to the one-yard line. Whoa, you've got to question the decision-making of John Little. Mark Wheeler with the tackle. Little leads the conference in punt returns and normally makes very intelligent decisions. Tim Foley's a former punt. Well, Tim Foley, here's John Little, leads the league in punt returns, but I question this decision. <laughs> so does John Little, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, he, he, right about then, he's saying, what I do that for? Now, I can tell you what happened, though. The last two punts hit the ground. Uh, a major offense against a punt returner, especially a guy like John Little that's such a heady player, doesn't want the ball hitting the ground, so he made a decision there. This one isn't going to hit the ground. Forgot where he was and put Georgia in a hole. From the one-yard line, bulled on. Hand off to the fullback, not much, about three yards goes number 43, David McCluskey. He was tackled by 40, Larry Smith. As a matter of fact, the last time Tesser punted, Georgia started at their four-yard line simply because the ball did drop dead inside the five, and now Georgia has started at the one. The field position has been tremendously in favor of Kentucky, but Georgia leads. Virginia leading Wake Forest, that's the second quarter score. Syracuse over Temple in the first period by three. Second down, seven Bulldogs from their own four. Jackson going deep. And he was looking for Freddie Lane, a speed merchant, but very good deep play by David Johnson back there on the right corner position. Boy, Jackson can certainly hum it. He's got the wind to his back right now, but he has a rifle-like arm. Freddie Lane ran a kind of an old takeoff. Johnson, well-schooled defensive backfield uh, coach in Kentucky's Chip Garber, and does a fine job. Johnson didn't bite, just stayed deep. Third down seven from the four-yard line. On the option. Kentucky stretches it out and knocks Georgia back to the two-yard line. David Johnson with the tackle. It was Tim Worley, the tailback with the ball, and it's back to the one-yard line. And Georgia's punter, Chris Carpenter, will have to have his heels near the back of the end zone. This is tough and deeply into the wind. It's going to be another field position situation. Yes, that time uh, Georgia had two out of its three backs going in the right direction. David McCluskey went the wrong way, so there was no fake by Jackson. I mean, his heels are right on the edge of the back of the end zone. You have to be careful not to step out of there. Good snap. A line drive punt. And a mix-up. Mays. It was Mays and Williams not deciding who could catch the ball. And it goes down at the 36. It will remain in possession of Kentucky. Go at the Georgia 47. Last one at the Georgia 47. And this one at the Georgia 35-yard line. Yet Kentucky has no points on the board. Georgia leads 7-0 with 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. Dooley. Screen right side to the tight end, number 80, Wheeler. Ball, and it's popped up into the air. Now, let's see. The whistle. Let's see who they will say have possession. I do not believe it ever went into the possession of Georgia. If that's the case, it will belong to Kentucky. And I think that's going to be the, that, that's the call, Kentucky football. Nobody ever had possession, I think, Tim. This is the same play that Georgia ran effectively in the first quarter. Roll right, left to the wide side of the field and screen it back to the tight end. Bang. Good hit there. What this one? That looked like Gary Moss. Greg Waters knocked it out. Volleyball. And I think it was actually recovered by Kentucky, as you saw in that replay. Here's Higgs. 
into the 25-yard line. Gain of about two yards on it. Yeah, watch old Muddy Waters. He's running a havoc out there today. Uh, you know, he's, uh, Gary Moss. Moss knocks it out, and then it's up for grabs. But Greg Waters was flinging his body about. He didn't <laughs> cause any particular damage that time. He did. He intimidated them, probably. He's like a tornado. You don't know. It's going to touch down. It may or may not cause damage, but it's going to touch down. It's an experienced <laughs> offensive line. This Georgia defense, the Georgia eight-man front versus the Kentucky wide tackle six. It's right. been Georgia's game so far. It has been, and uh, Georgia's been successful with the option. Most of their success has come off the decision made by James Jackson and his running ability. It's third down inches at the 25 of Georgia. Here's Higgs. He got the first down. Boy, did he get stuck at about the 23-yard line. Mark Higgs, number 22, was really hit by Tony Flack, number eight for Georgia. But after the first down, and Kentucky's drive stays alive. Excellent surge there by Henry Harris, number 52, coming across the line of scrimmage on his feet, chasing it from the right side. Georgia defense playing very well. As you can see, the four first downs for Kentucky, that's all they got the entire game against LSU down to Baton Rouge in the rain. On a first and ten, Bryant in motion. Georgia with everybody coming. And Dooley just threw it away. He just escaped with his life that time. There's the 52, Harris was back there. Number 90, Henry Williams, also pressuring the quarterback. And Dooley now is five out of 14 for 34 yards. And Jerry Claiborne. I keep wondering if he's going to have to make a decision about changing quarterbacks. Not that Dooley's played so badly, but maybe just to see if something can get going here. Well, uh, you've got to give the young man time. You know, Claiborne's upset. I think he was embarrassed last week at LSU by his offensive performance, and he can't be feeling real good about this so far. Here they come. Second down, 10. Incomplete at the 11-yard line. Tremendous pressure by Georgia. Calvin Ruff. Number 86 for Georgia was right in the face of Kevin Dooley. Every time he releases the ball, if somebody's in his face, penalty marker is down. Officials discussing it. Robert I.A., the referee. Holding. Kentucky. They have to start holding with this Georgia blitz. The Georgia pressure has been intense. There's Bill Ransdell. We doubt that he'll play. He has had a collapsed lung, has practiced, but I think the doctors would prefer that he not play in this game if possible. You know, I bet Bill was saying, though, I, I can do it. I'm ready. You know, <laughs> Claiborne does not bring someone that can't play on a trip. That's a, that's a rule of his. And that's why Ransdell was not at LSU. Now, they may just stick him in there just to get, somebody, get something going, wind some people's clock so he can slap some people on the helmet, wake them up. Second down, 20 Kentucky at the 33. First down marker is way down at the 13-yard line. Dooley. It's complete. No, it's incomplete. The signal is incomplete from the official on the far side of the field. After one signal complete, the other said no, and they'll bring it back. This time they give Dooley some time to throw the ball. You see Myers 71 working, Vern Johnson 76. Uh, My. Stephen Boswell was there a little bit too soon. He was not late to the no, ball. No, he was not late. He was using... Uh, Logan there is a ladder. <laughs> It'll be third down 20 Kentucky from the 33. As a matter of fact, this might be the first time I've seen pass interference in four years. <laughs> That's right, and it wasn't called. <laughs> Unbelievable. That'll be a fully memorial call there. Here's Dooley on third down and long. Has a man open. It is Logan. Logan drives to the 21. Remember, he had to go to the 13 for the first down. He's back near the original line of scrimmage. John Little with the tackle, and we'll probably see Tim Worley, or Joe Worley, excuse me, come in here for the field goal attempt for the University of Kentucky. He this, attempted along with, excuse me, Tim, earlier that was stopped by the wind, but this one, which will be a 39-yarder, has the wind at his back. He had a good foot into the last one. He leads the league in field goals and is an excellent kicker. with 13 out of 16. He's now 13 out of 17 at the attempt system. It's wide to the right side. So the leading field goal kicker in the league, Joe Worley, is 0 for 2 today. And Georgia continues to lead in this game 7 to nothing with 8-11 remaining in the second quarter. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television's best foot kicking. But he had a tough time last week against LSU and is 0 for 2 today, Tim. Yeah. 
Confidence is a very fragile thing. All you need is a little bit of failure to get in there to ruin your attitude and your imagery sometimes. So you've got to, every time you kick the football, See, I practice this on a golf course, and it never works. You're supposed to envision the shot. The, but he's been fairly successful, and you've got to see that ball going through there. And once you have a couple misses, now you, now you have to deal with that negative attitude. And as a coach, what you try to do is help him to forget anything bad and just don't ever yell or scream at a kicker. That was Henderson for five. Now it's second down, five Bulldogs. And a penalty marker down to the 25. No, the 25 second club. Illegal procedures for Georgia after they had been set. And so it'll be a five yard mark off against the Bulldogs as we take a look at some college football scores from action around the country this afternoon. Kansas leading Oklahoma State 7 0. Florida over Virginia Tech. Neil Anderson. Neil Anderson threw a touchdown pass to Frankie Neal in that game for Florida. Virginia leading Wake Forest 13 0. That's the second quarter score. George Welch's name being bandied about as a possible Notre Dame coaching candidate should they make a change up there. But Virginia doesn't want that to happen. He's done a great job there. Here's Jackson. He has a man wide open. Diving attempt is incomplete. Number 30 fullback Keith Henderson. That's the fullback, and he was running with the speed of a wide receiver. Step for step with the cornerbacks there, but it went incomplete. Trying to roll Jackson to the wide side of the field and hit Henderson kind of on a flat takeoff up the sideline. Nice job by Barry Alexander running with the fullback. Third down, 10. Georgia stopping themselves with the procedure penalty. Third and 10 now from the from their own 22-yard line. McCluskey, 43, and Worley, 38 in the backfield for Georgia. And off to McCluskey. He gets some of it back, but not enough out near the 30-yard line, and Georgia's going to have to punt the ball away again. And then comes Chris Carpenter. Wind at his back. Georgia leading 7-0. Seven minutes remaining in the first half from Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you. Hoping you're enjoying our Southeastern Conference Game of the Week. There's Brian Williams. Averages 8.5 yards per punt return. Carpenter got off a very poor punt into the wind at the opening of this quarter. And he got this one up high. Fair catch at the 29-yard line. And with a win in any situation. Our mascot, Ugga the fourth. He is a red shirt senior mascot and has had quite a successful career of the 80s. First down 10. Wildcats from the 29. And off to the tailback Logan and he just runs into a stone wall this Georgia defensive front the linebackers and the down linemen are playing well that was defensive end Calvin Ruff 86 with a stop that time these Kentucky running backs are taking real punishment at the point of contact in the Kentucky I'm, you know, I'm sure that uh, Farrell Sheridan Kentucky offensive line coach is a little bit concerned about the performance of his players right now they're just not getting any zip off the ball they're not moving Georgia out of there I'll bet Logan and Higgs are concerned, too. Kevin Dooley, man wide open, first down. Out of the 40-yard line, and across the 40 is Cornell Burbage, Gary Moss with the tackle. So finally, a quarterback gets uncranked. I want to take just a second, Tim, and I know you joined me in this, too. Wish our very best to one of the finest quarterbacks in the country, Tony Robinson, who played in our telecast game last week with Tennessee and Alabama. He's injured. He had serious knee surgery. He's out for the rest of the year. He's a wonderful young man, and we just want to, on behalf of PBS Sports, wish him the best. Amen. Great player. Had a lot of fun watching him. First down 10, Kentucky, from the 41 draw here's Higgs great acceleration but Georgia reacting beautifully to the ball today gain of about four Calvin Ruff with his second consecutive tackle junior from Eatonton Georgia the lineman set trying to slow down that Georgia rush a little bit and the way you do it with screens draws you may look for a, a reverse before the game's over but you have to do something to slow down that charge that's coming across the line Second down, seven, Kentucky from the 44-yard line of the Wildcats, trailing Georgia 7-0. Five minutes to go in the first half. Dooley, some time this time, across the middle, complete to Burbage for the first down. The ball is raked out, but the official says the whistle had sounded at the 41-yard line, 42-yard line of Georgia. Crowd doesn't like it here. Gary Moss with the stop, but I think that was a good call. It seemed as though he was down. Let's see it again. Here comes the dog. You see 42, Brantley coming 
John Little is coming from the left side. This time the Kentucky line does a good job of protection. Nice coverage by Gary Moss. He's there. Burbage makes the catch. He's down. Now the ball is coming out. Excellent call by the officials on the first down. Higgs. Wham! Down he goes inside the 40 to about the 39. Gain of three. That was 59. Greg Waters. And Swainsboro can be proud of their native son, Greg. He has been a, a real tornado out here today. Remind, he's playing a little bit like a fellow we liked so much with Kentucky last year, Cam Jacobs, a wreck looking for a place to happen. That's right. And uh, Kentucky saw some of that last week with uh, Brooks at LSU. They just couldn't get him blocked. Greg's at pro size, 6'3", 235. Kevin Dooley under pressure from guess who? 59, Greg Waters, his second sack. We're gonna get this, excuse me. Just excuse me. We're going to get to see this again. Waters just having a fantastic game. Look at him. He's looking in at the football. As soon as the ball moves, bang. Now he's off. And he's already around. Dooley needs to... Of course, that's kind of a dangerous thing to say. At that particular angle, he wanted to step up into the pocket a little bit more. As he drifted back, he didn't really help out Johnson much, who was trying to keep Waters off him. Ten-yard loss. Third and 18 from the 50. Kentucky really struggling here today. They have negative yardage now. Uh, negative uh, rushing yardage. Dooley goes down again. It's number 59 again. The third sack for Greg Muddy Waters. Oh, my. Oh, make me a star. This guy's going to go to Hollywood. Our producer, Skip Ellison, and director, Ken Fouts, are all over him. Watch this. Johnson just never gets off the ball. Did you see him rock back? He just never had his footing. Lost his balance uh, on the initial hit. R Waters threw him to the ground and touchdown. They're just backing up and backing up. And the puck goes down, gets a Kentucky bounce. They're going to spot it down at the just outside the 25-yard line. 2.52 to go in the first half. It's Georgia 7, Kentucky nothing. Greg Waters says, thanks for joining my show today. This is Turner, Network Television. Lower left-hand side of your screen, you see the time remaining in the first half with Georgia holding on to a 7 to nothing lead. Kentucky has had excellent field position all day long, but just hasn't been able to do anything with the ball. LSU... Shutting out Kentucky last week, 10 to nothing. 18th rank will be playing the Ole Miss Rebels at Jackson, Mississippi. That'll be our SEC game of the week from Jackson Memorial Stadium. Hope you'll join us for, for that game next week, 12:30 Eastern Time. First and 10, Georgia. Here's James Jackson. Oh, complete to Henderson for a gain of about five. Brian Williams with the big hit on the big fullback. Jerry Claiborne looks on National Coach of the Year, 1974. Those Maryland Terrapins. Longtime Bear Bryant Aid. Successful head coach in this league for a long time. Look at that. Minus nine yards rushing for Kentucky. Georgia. Now going up over 130 yards as they get out near the 40-yard line. Mazza and Don Urano combining on the stop. Tim Worley. Worley, the freshman from Lumberton, North Carolina, and he has uh, 14 yards rushing on the afternoon. He and Keith Henderson are the backs of the future for Georgia. Already playing, as a matter of fact, first and 10 from the 40. And off to Keith Henderson. Oh, my, the speed for that fullback to the 30-yard line of Kentucky. Reminds you a little bit of Pulpwood Smith, last year's fullback for Georgia, who could pop it so fast. 30-yard gain. You see Anderson, 64, 68, Kim Stevens, Strozier. Kind of negates John Dunball, tries to reach inside, can't make the play, and then it's Henderson taking it down the field, legging it out. Carmike Caldwell tries to buy time. We see it again. Urano gets a little, he gets stuck inside, kind of takes that play on with the wrong shoulder. Henderson this time about three over to the left side of the 27-yard line. Clock down to 150 remaining in the first half. And Henderson now with 64 yards in six carries. Make that 66 in seven carries. McCluskey goes in to give Henderson a little bit of a rest. Burroughs, Perry, Anderson, Stevens, Strozier doing a fine job along the Georgia offensive front. When these two teams meet, the game will be decided by the Lions. On second down eight, Jackson. Cuts it, 25, 20. Gets the first down. 
for the 18-yard line. Tony Mays gets credit for the tackle. And James Jackson racking up the yardage now. He has 58 yards on the day. And Georgia calls timeout with a minute 19 to go in the first half, and they spot the ball right at the 18-yard line. But James Jackson is only three out of eight passing the ball for 43 yards and has thrown an interception, but look at those rushing stats. We're very proud at uh, Turner Broadcasting System to be presenting next summer. He is president. And that's uh, probably the most prestigious position in college coaching, I'd say. Two fine men developing two great programs. First and ten from the 18 of Kentucky. Georgia leads 7 to nothing. Jackson under pressure this time. Can he get away? Look at him run. But he's still going to lose yardage. Excellent pressure by the Wildcats that time. 38 Mazza and 96 Dumbled were the men applying the pressure to Jackson. He lost less than he might have in some other circumstance, but he lost nevertheless. As you watch uh, Smith drifting out in coverage, Larry Smith, Steve Mazza fighting upfield, say, come on, come on back here. James. <laughs> and uh, Jackson just displaying his speed, outruns Mazza. Seward Stubbs gets there to drive him out of bounds. He doesn't have grease on his jersey, does he? <laughs> Loss of 11. Second down, 21, Georgia. Back at the 29-yard line. A minute 10 to go in the half. Here's a reverse. Freddie Lane been very effective this way. Kentucky stays at home. Lane breaks the tackle. He's in trouble, though. Lost a yard or so at the 30. Freddie Lane's very effective on that play, but Kentucky is fourth in the nation coming into this game, as you saw in our graphics a moment ago, stopping the run. So, you know, they're not going to give it up easily, folks. Georgia calls timeout with 52 seconds left in the half. It'll be third down, 22. Bill Lewis coordinating the defense for Georgia. George Hafner on offense, and Kentucky's Terry Strock on defense. And Jerry Eisman on offense. Third and 22 from the 30-yard line. They're going to give it to McCluskey. Gets it to the 24 and goes down, and Georgia has run 29 of 37 plays on the ground thus far today. Only eight passes. They only wasted eight downs then. <laughs> <laughs> only completed. They, actually, they wasted uh, five of those. Their third three for eight, passing the ball for 43 yards. Well, I think they've, they've gone back to throw. One of their more effective plays is uh, when Kentucky covers their receivers and Jackson hits the road. And we're going to have a field goal attempt coming up here with 19 seconds left in the half, I think. Chris Carpenter's decided to call timeout on behalf of Vince Dooley. But I Toughness think straight ahead, grind it out type offense. And, you know, that's what they've been successful at today. There you see the straight ahead kicker's toe tied up for Steve Crumley. And here is Crumley. In for, looks like it's going to be a 41-yard attempt from right in the center of the field with a pretty substantial win. the timeouts and all the pressure didn't affect the freshman from Athens and Crumley pops it between the uprights and Georgia takes a 10 point lead with 10 seconds remaining in the half 41 yarder by Steve Crumley this game is very important to these two teams as both have one loss in the SEC already Georgia of course has a tie thanks to that 13 13 ball game in Nashville last week and the standings are all knotted up six teams have an opportunity to still win the SEC all the way down through Kentucky as you see Vanderbilt Ole Miss Mississippi State and Florida ineligible for the title uh, and two losses probably won't win it so that that's why I make the comment about Vanderbilt Mississippi State and Ole Miss but it's possible that for the first time in the SEC that two losses could at least tie for a championship. LSU leading the way, and they've got a good-looking schedule, as does Tennessee, but Tennessee, of course, without Robinson. Alabama has yet to play Auburn, of course, in the season ender. Auburn really has a tough road. Auburn's got to play Georgia, Florida, and uh, Alabama. And the short kickoff is brought back to the 36, and the clock goes down to four. Two or three games, it's... Uh, to see that many premier quarterbacks go down in one league is really strange. Clock winding down. Dooley's plenty of time to throw it long and does that. Looks for Burr. It's intercepted by Georgia. That's number three, Gary Moss. He's got plenty of room. Only Dooley is going to be there. He eludes him, and down goes Moss. 
fumbling the ball on the last play, but the time has run out. So that'll be nothing but an exciting play, and Georgia leads 10 to nothing as the Wildcats and the Bulldogs go in at halftime. That was a 50-yard interception returned by Gary Moss, the junior from Cleveland, Georgia, as we look at it again. Now watch this. I don't know who it is for Kentucky. I think it's Burbage. Doesn't even go up for the ball. The ball is overthrown way behind him. Really didn't have a chance for it. I thought he had more of a chance for it from up here. Now Georgia doing a good job forming up. Coaches gotten the approval to play Bill Ransdell, and we are going to see him in the second half right after the kickoff. Uh, Kevin Dooley was 8 of 19 for 69 yards and one interception. Not all his fault, but they apparently feel they need the leadership. Here is Mark Logan, number 25. Only out to the 10-yard line. First half statistics, you see the rushing, minus 9 to 167. Passing, the Cats only have net 19 yards. The Dogs 43, even though they have a total of 69. Take the sacks away and you get that. Uh, time of possession about equal. Turnovers three for the Dogs, but Kentucky could not capitalize on any of those as they couldn't move the ball. It'll be first and 10 from the 10. And Bill Ransdell, the quarterback who was injured against Clemson, is now in for his first action in three games. he couldn't find anybody open either and Jerry Claiborne talked about Bill Ransdell and his possibility of play he had to get hit with a space hammer to, uh, to get hurt because of the pain that he has we actually hit that pain him with a, with a metal hammer right over, <laughs> right over where he was uh, uh, hit and it, it didn't he didn't even face him so I say that there's no way he's gonna get hurt and uh, if you feel like he can go in there and play well he'll more than like Claiborne talking about the jacket that Ransdell is wearing. Fumble, Logan fumbles. It's bulldog ball at the 13. John Little fell on it. Just what the Wildcats did not need. Georgia leads 10-0, and now they have an exceptional opportunity inside the 15-yard line. Logan with the fumble, number 25. Logan jumping over, trying to make some extra yardage. Billy Mitchell puts his helmet on it. John Little there to clean up the scraps. So the Bulldogs with an excellent opportunity. First down 10 from the Kentucky 14-yard line. That's fullback Henderson with a couple of yards over right guard. Henderson, the leading rusher for Georgia in the first half of play with 66 yards. Second leading rusher was quarterback James Jackson, who scored the Georgia touchdown. So Kentucky with their second turnover of this ball game, Mark Logan's fumble. Second down eight from the 12-yard line, Bulldogs. Cassius Osborne in motion. Hand off to Worley. The tailback to the 10-yard line, where it will be third down and about five for Georgia. Nice hit by Duckworth, Don Duckworth. It amazes me that he can play in there with all those big fellas being as diminutive as he is. But he, like so many of the Kentucky players we've seen over the last several years, Bob, uh, when you look at them, you think, uh-oh, this could be bad, and then they end up winning a football game. So, On paper, Kentucky could never have beaten Wisconsin in the Hall of Fame Bowl. No way. But did Here they do have their backs to the wall. Third down six, we're going to call it, at the 10-yard line. Bulldogs after the fumble. Henderson stopped at the line of scrimmage. Henderson gets the handoff from Jackson. The Georgia fans booing the fact that Georgia didn't do something a little more interesting here. But they are going to have to go for the field goal now. The line of scrimmage at the 10. It'll be a 27-yard attempt by Steve Crumley, who hit a 41-yarder just prior to halftime. Good defense by the Wildcats. That would have been disastrous to have Georgia come out of the box with seven points. Well, Georgia kept it very conservative on that. They ran the fullback, then they ran the tailback, and they ran it again. Penalty marker is down. Kick is up and good, but there is a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. Now, this could be interesting. In this situation, a flag came out early. Probably the end man on the line of scrimmage for Kentucky is offside, I would imagine. Now, look at the marker. What do you think? Is that going to... It's offside Kentucky, but I believe it would not be a first down. It might be enough for Georgia to go for it on fourth, though. Let's see what they decide. Vince Dooley has, I don't remember him taking points off the board before. Let's see what his decision is. 
I got to believe that they're going to take the three in this kind of ball game. Dooley's going to the phone. You see him uh, swipe the phones off an assistant's head there, and he wants to find out exactly how far it is. George Hafner's upstairs passing on the information. He's thinking about it a little bit. Carpenter signaled uh, declined the penalty, as did Dooley. So the Bulldogs will keep the three. Right. Not necessarily in that order, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So keep the three, decline the penalty. Tremley with a 26-yarder. How much more pressure could you have following Kevin Butler? And he's doing a good job. He struggled a little early. Vince Dooley believes in this young man as he does his freshman punter, Chris Carpenter. Always a strong part of the Georgia football game is the uh, special teams and kicking game. Now, Kentucky ball again, first and 10 on the 20. They only had a couple of plays last time when Logan fumbled. Ransdell has a man deep. It's Burbage, but he doesn't hit him. Burbage had beaten the defender, Michael Willis, over there. But Ransdell couldn't get the ball to him. Ransdell, remember, had a collapsed lung. And you can see that jacket that Jerry Claiborne had talked about earlier. It's around his ribs. And obviously, it constrains his motion just a bit. He's fourth in the conference in passing efficiency, by the way, before he was injured. Higgs, number 22. And Derry, number 44, in the backfield for Kentucky on second down. Here's Higgs. to the 37-yard line. First down, Kentucky. Michael Willis with the tackle. And that's what Higgs can bring to the game, the 5'7", 190. Running back. When you've got a defensive pass rush like George has been putting on, you've got to do something to try to slow it down. Give those defensive linemen something to think about. So they come back with the draw. Counter with the draw. And Higgs seems to have, seems to have totally recovered from his knee surgery. Here's Ramsdale. Has yet to complete a pass. Almost picked off. Number eight, Tony Flack batted it down. Penalty marker is down on the field. It was intended for 17, Tim Jones. 13 to nothing. Georgia leading. 12-10 to go. Third quarter. Illegal receiver downfield again. Robert Aye, the official with the signal. Jerry Claiborne wondering the same thing. Just what the heck is that all about? See, what can sometimes happen on a play-action pass is a lineman will fire out, make contact, and drive his man off the ball a little bit. If that happens and he loses contact with his man, he's got to go immediately to the ground. If he just stands there, the fish is going to throw a flag. Second down 15 from the 32-yard line. Loss of down. Here comes Burbage in motion. Bill Ransell. First action since he was injured against Clemson. Draw play. Higgs breaks a tackle, dives forward, gets about back to the original line of scrimmage. We're going to our studios in Atlanta for a college football update. A few moments ago, we told you that Purdue was trailing Michigan State. We now have an update. Michigan State leading 7-3 to three when Purdue's Jim Everett rolls right, finds Ray Wallace on a six-yard scoring pass. Purdue on top of Michigan State at halftime, 10-7. to seven. More updates and highlights after the game. Back to Bob and Tim. Thank you, Craig. And Purdue out in front of Michigan State. Tim, you're happy about that. Tim signaled a touchdown on that play, by the way. Jerry Claiborne trying to find the missing pieces of the puzzle. On a third and ten, pressure for Ransdell. Had a possibility of completing that pass, but was just a little bit behind his intended receiver, Mark Higgs. Really good pressure, though, came from 56, Bill Mitchell. And Ransdell took a real hit on that play. See if he's all right when he goes over to the sideline. Takes a real shot here. Just opened up. Somebody just blows the coverage here. Because they're going, when Ransel in the game, you can bet they're going with maximum protection. And somebody just went the wrong way. Sixth punt of the day for Jay Tesser. Line oh, drive. Right. Takes a good Kentucky bounce. So he's been getting a good bounce on the ball today. Down to the 23-yard line of Georgia. Georgia leads 13. Reason to cheer. 13 to nothing they lead with 11-12 to go third quarter. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Sanford Stadium, Athens, Georgia. The Wildcats and the Bulldogs. Jackson. It's picked off. Excellent interception by Tony Mays, the junior from Paintsville, Kentucky. Stepped up there, and Kentucky once again has a great opportunity at the 34-yard line of Georgia, but after every opportunity thus far, the Bulldogs have denied Kentucky the end zone. Jackson 
Little rollout. He's trying to go for the O-cut here. The outside pattern sets up, lets it fly. Nice break on the ball by Tony Mays. Comes in and makes a beautiful interception. Now Kentucky got to do something with this scoring opportunity. Diggs and Derry in the backfield behind quarterback Bill Ransdell. Forced into action despite coming off an injury. Pitch to Logan. Needs a block. Doesn't get it. He's out there all alone, and down he goes after a gain of about a yard. Nothing but red jerseys out there for Logan on the sweep left. Brantley with the tackle for Georgia, number 42. That Kentucky offensive line really struggling against the Bulldog eight-man front today. The Georgia defensive unit has played exceptionally well, particularly Greg Waters, Jake Richardson, Calvin Ruff. Here's Ransdell on second down nine. Has a man, misses him. Cisco Bryant was wide open, but one of the reasons he was pressured is 52. Henry Harris was all over Ransdell. Just no time at all for these Kentucky quarterbacks. We're going to pause five seconds for station identification. And Bill Ransdell is 0 for 5 now, Tim, coming off that injury. Now he's been pressured, and uh, there are times when he's just thrown it away. This is a time when Kentucky usually comes after him. Third down nine, Georgia pressuring him. He gets it to Derry. Derry gets a couple of yards, but no more to the 30-yard line. And we're going to have to get a Kentucky field goal attempt here. Here comes Joe Worley, who missed earlier. Worley in somewhat of a slump. That's the wide receiver there who often holds. Number 17, Tim Jones, and there's Joe Worley. Sophomore from Oakwood, Virginia. He leads the league in kicking, but as Tim was talking earlier, is in a bit of a slump. Fourth down six from the 30. A little bit into the wind, huh? Yes, it is. Wind's brisk, as a matter of fact. Not even close. He misses about 12, 15 yards to the right. Okay. And Georgia continues to lead 13 to nothing with 9.41 remaining in the third quarter. And Indiana leading Michigan, fourth ranked in the nation in the second quarter. It is Florida over Virginia Tech at the half, 15-10 down in Gainesville. Virginia leading Wake Forest in ACC action. That's a halftime score also. Keep you updated on college scores and highlights all afternoon long here on Super Football Saturday. Here's Lars Tate. Tate across the 35 to the 36 or 7 yard line. Gain of 5 or so on the play. Well, Jerry Claiborne said we're going to find out just how good our defense against the rush will be when we play the Bulldogs with their excellent offensive line and good crew of running backs and Kentucky's finding that Georgia indeed can consume a lot of time on the clock and move the ball against them. Although it's only one touchdown, two field goals for Georgia. Hand off to the fullback. Out across the 41st down Georgia for David McCluskey, number 43. And that's probably what you're going to see for the next 60 yards if Georgia keeps the, the football. And the sixth move again for the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs are 1-1-1 one, one, and one in the Southeastern Conference. Lost to Alabama in the opener. Then they were tied. Last week, 13-13 by Vanderbilt. Here's McCluskey to midfield. Gain of about seven yards on the play. We're going to see this uh, ISO from guard to guard here of Georgia. McCluskey's reading the block of the guard. You see? Wilkins is his head to the strong side, so McCluskey's going to take it back against the grain, and then he takes on Brian Williams. Now, it says 210 in the book for Brian Williams, and I'd hate to bite meat by that scale. Lars takes to the 29-yard line. Georgia really adding up the yards now. 45th and 27 Douglas with a stop and a run of 21 yards for Lars Tate. He has 41 yards on the day. Get this balance. Worley has 16 yards. Henderson 68. Tate 41. McCluskey 41. And Jackson 47. Everybody running the ball for Georgia. That's right. Hitting that all six cylinders. The Georgia Bulldog offense. From the 31st down 10 Bulldogs. Leading 13-0. 7.50 to go in the third quarter. Henderson. 
about three yards off right guard. See, that sounds about right. Plus, Troy Sadowski has no receptions. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Sadowski is tied for the receiving lead. Tim and I like to kid Vince Dooley because uh, one of our earlier meetings, Tim said, you know, I think... Uh, tight ends are your leading receivers. And he says, no, 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 it's wide receivers. They even looked it up. <laughs> Troy Sadowski caught three last week in the press release. They said an abundant number for a Georgia receiver. On second and seven. Lars Tate. Short of the first down for the 23-yard line. Tackle number two, Brian Lewis. And here's a good look at the Georgia tight end in action. Boom. Good contact. Reese unloads gets back up into the play. As a tight end, you're not going to blow people off the ball. The idea is you're going to position block. Just give that back an, an ability to use your body and get upfield. Troy Sadowski's a freshman from Chambly, Georgia. 6'4", 225. There's Lawrence Tate. This is third down three. James Jackson doesn't get the first down. Penalty marker is down on the play. At the Georgia line of scrimmage, Steve Mazza, number 38, with the tackle for Kentucky. That was third and three. Jackson was short and the penalty looks to be against Kentucky. The Wildcats struggling here. Personal foul. Wildcats. Personal foul against Kentucky. Kentucky has not beaten Georgia since 1977. So that'll be a first down for the Bulldogs. They'll tack it on from the spot of the play. downfield. It was just enough outside the 20 to really hurt. They mark it at the 12-yard line. So the Bulldogs first down now at the 12. Leading 13 to nothing. 6.43 to go third quarter. Georgia's 13th first down of this afternoon. Last week, Kentucky could muster only four first downs all game long against LSU in that 10-0 shutout. Kentucky now going into their seventh straight quarter without scoring a point. James Jackson on the keeper for the nine. Georgia started this season. They weren't exactly sure who was going to be the quarterback. James Jackson, Wayne Johnson played them both a little bit. And then when Vince Dooley settled on James Jackson, you knew he was going to go back to that rock em, sock em, three yards and a cloud of dust Georgia offense. And that's what's been successful. That's right. What he really settled on was a style of football because Jackson's the man that can run the option and make things happen in a hurry. Second and seven. Worley outside. Touchdown. Great toss. Georgia gets some players on the ground. There you see Larry Smith going down. John Dunball. Looked like he had containment on that play. Just couldn't hold in Worley. Worley has six touchdowns running the ball this year. The freshman from Lumberton, North Carolina. 6-2-2-10, and he's that classic big, tough, and fast Georgia tailback. He and Lars Tate provided tough combination. Tate's played a lot today with a sore hand, but Worley and Tate are almost mirrors of each other. Both have the exact same size. Georgia going to go for two points here with their now they call timeout. <laughs> they decide well maybe we want. Georgia leads 19 to nothing. Oh, of course the two point conversion could give Georgia the 21 point take three touchdowns to get lead in the game. Look where James Jackson goes. Okay, where's uh, Hold It? Uh, wait a minute. You're not. I don't recognize. Oh, oh. That didn't feel right. I'll tell you what was great. Old Kim Stevens is the guy who turned around and says, What's going on, James? You're in the wrong place, bud. And James is just a little fella. He's going to make that mistake again. Okay, regain your composure here. Okay, okay. James Jackson is uh, on the sideline right now, and the coaches are telling him what to say to apologize when he goes in there. <laughs> James, just tell him that you were excited. And it was... I, then the reason I, you know, I'm having such fun with that is because I've done the same thing. <laughs> it's kind of hard to cover up. You just get, I was just kidding. <laughs> Oh, my. 
Adam there started checking over. The uh, first thing I think James Jackson noticed is that the defense was out of line. <laughs> like, why are they all shifted to my left? And that's when he was told by Kim Stevens. <laughs> Going for two, Georgia. James Jackson throwing it into the end zone. Incomplete. Penalty marker in the end zone, however. Hold it. There could be a, a flag here. Number 27 covering on the play was Maurice Douglas. They were trying to get the ball to Troy Sadowski. Tremendous pressure on Jackson. He just threw it really out of the end zone. They could call this uncatchable. Let's see what the call will be. Yeah. That's what they are saying, is that the ball was not catchable, thus no penalty, even though there might have been interference on the play. So Georgia fails Here's the scoring drive. 69 yards, eight plays, all running plays, just like on the first drive for Georgia. And they're doing it against the number four team in the nation and stopping the run. And Georgia leads 19 to nothing. Line drive to Logan. And he falls down, but after he gets the ball out to the 26-yard line, comes Mark Logan. And let's see if the Wildcats can untrack anything offensively. They have been very ineffective thus far today. Logan fumbled earlier in this second half, setting up a Georgia field goal. Chris Derry was limping back toward the huddle. He might have taken a blow in his uh, thigh in the kickoff. Gary and Logan are in the backfield. Ransville continues to quarterback. Only one out of six since entering the game here in the second half. Hands off to Logan. Logan with about three. Out to the maybe four yards. Out to the 30-31 yard line. Bill Mitchell 56 with the tackle for Georgia. And Logan has only about 18 yards on the day. Higgs has 28. And that's it running the ball. Dooley has lost 27. You can see. Uh, one of the Georgia players is down, shaken up. Let's see who that is. We'll make a positive identification on the number before we let you know. Looks like Michael Willis shaken up for Georgia. And let's look at it again and see how Willis was injured. Georgia already thin in the secondary. Let's hope he's okay. Did you watch 44 Boswell, 56 Mitchell, 28 Aaron Chum there, Little. Mitchell coming off, making the hit. Oh, he's bent back over. Hyperextension of that right knee for right side cornerback Michael Willis. Let's see who goes in to replace him. I think it will be Miles Smith. Yes, they're moving Flack back to the corner. Miles Smith will go to his safety position, and Miles Smith is playing hurt. Yes, he is. He's got an ankle problem. Well, Georgia has had the injuries. Everybody's had a lot this year, as you mentioned earlier, too. Second down five from the 31-yard line. Here's Logan trying to get outside. Nowhere at all. L loss of about three. Bill Mitchell with the penetration. Number 56 for Georgia from Dalton. In total offense, it's just incredible. Georgia with 273 yards. Kentucky with only 92. Georgia's leading tackler this year, Bill Mitchell, number 56. Kentucky trying to circle the wagons, really. Going back to two tight ends, just trying to establish something. Dermani Dawson ran right by Bill Mitchell. He came through and made the tackle. Third down seven, Wildcat from the 29-yard line. Ransdell, an obvious passing situation. Throws it to Logan, who's one-on-one -on -one out here. But he's short the first down, driven back to the 33 by 56, Bill Mitchell. All oh, these Georgia defenders today. Mitchell, Waters, Brantley, Boswell, Ruff. You can go on and on. Tony Black had a great game. Watch number 56, Bill Mitchell from Dalton, Georgia. He got him again, turning, trying to locate a receiver, dropping to the outside. Now the ball is in the air. Here he comes. Head up, open field, pow. Not an inch more as Little gets there to help out. Billy Mitchell in the mold of those Georgia linebackers. There's a better punt for freshman Jay Tesser. Over the head of Fred Lane. Got a foul. Into the end zone for the touchback. That was almost a great punt. It was excellent as it was, and he's going to get great yardage. His longest by far. 67 yards on that punt by Jay Tesser into the win. Georgia leads 19 to nothing. Four minutes to go third quarter. The Bulldogs have a new quarterback. Freshman Wayne Johnson from Columbus has come in to replace James Jackson at quarterback. Not sure why, except that Vince Dooley may want to get some action here. Georgia in control of the game, leading 19 to nothing. And the 
handoff goes to the fullback McCluskey. He gets out to the 24-yard line, and he stopped there. So Jerry Claiborne is just wondering why his team has not been able to score now in seven quarters. They were held scoreless by LSU, and now for nearly three quarters, held scoreless by Georgia. And they've had some pretty good field position. Defense has performed well, took the ball away from the Georgia offense in good field position, and they just haven't been able to capitalize on it. There comes Lars Tate. Oh, he's running hard. First down to the 33-yard line. Lars Tate practiced only a little this week, almost none at all last week after breaking a finger on his right hand and was highly questionable as to whether or not he could play in today's game. As a matter of fact, they had moved receiver Fred Lane to the tailback position in case Tate couldn't go. There's James Jackson on the sidelines for Georgia. Three of nine for 43 yards and two interceptions throwing the ball, but he had run for 50 yards. Wayne Johnson. And a quarterback, a redshirt freshman. Johnson handing off to McCluskey out to the 39-yard line. Jeff Kramer with the stop for the Kentucky Wildcats. Number 53, Kramer, sophomore from Newport, Kentucky. And McCluskey's having himself a pretty good day also. He has 51 yards and 10 carries. And I just see that number 37 went into the game, uh, Tim, Stan Blaylock. See somebody's ankle being taped there. I'm not sure who, but number 37 for George is a very big, deep threat. Let's see if they try to do something with him. He goes in motion at the top of the screen. That was Michael Willis, his ankle being taped for Georgia. Short of the first down goes McCluskey. Blaylock simply went down and threw a block on a cornerback. <laughs> so much for that. Well, you know, Wayne Johnson can throw it as far as Blaylock can run. We've, we've seen him air it out. You want to get Blaylock in there, get him in. Kentucky used to seeing him before you try to send him on one of those takeoffs. Blaylock comes back, now Hockaday goes back in. Hockaday and Osborne are the wide receivers for Georgia on third down one at the 43. Pitch to Tate. He's down, Bulldog. Tate to the 50. Don Urano, the linebacker with the top number 39 for Kentucky's Wildcats. And Georgia just continuing to run the ball. Georgia has 25 yards from Worley and a touchdown. 71 from Henderson, 59 from Tate, 53 from McCluskey, 50 from Jackson. And Georgia just running and running and running, all between, mostly between the tackles. They've broken a couple outside, but uh, a lot of it has come on that fullback cutback. Now, that in this last drive, they've gone more to the tailback. They're tossing it to Tate. Tate's running as hard as I've ever seen him run. Taking a rest now, Worley and Henderson are in the backfield for Georgia. Osborne in motion on the first down from the 50. Here's Wayne Johnson on the keeper. To the 30-yard line goes the freshman. Columbus, Georgia, Wayne Johnson, a 20-yard run on the option play. Pretty nifty here. You see him cut it up field. Gary Sexton's going to miss him right there. He's got the quarterback. Now Dwayne Johnson gets his feet under him, starts spinning and twisting. Good effort by the Georgia quarterback. Dwayne Johnson had only four yards on the season before that 20-yard run. First and 10, Georgia at the 30 of Kentucky. Tate back in the ball game gets a couple of yards to the 27-yard line. Georgia just keeps running it right down the throat of this tired now Kentucky Wildcat defensive unit. And it can be discouraging for a defense to, to turn the ball over to the offense in good field position time after time and have nothing happen. And they played uh, valiantly against LSU last year, not I mean last week, not allowing a touchdown until 37 seconds remaining in the game. Almost the end of the quarter. Here's Wayne Johnson. On the second down. First down at the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Wayne Johnson. 27 yards. With 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And now Johnson has rushed for 47 yards. My, showed some speed there, too. Wayne Johnson gets into the act. That's his first his first touchdown running the ball. He had thrown for one earlier. Georgia now with 310 yards rushing on the afternoon against a team that's averaging, allowing only 74 per game. Trembley's point after is good. 
Georgia 26. Kentucky nothing with 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Let's have a look at Wayne Johnson, number 18 from Columbus, Georgia. Good job coverage here by Kentucky. Watch Brian Williams. Watch McCluskey block there. I guess he really didn't block him as much as he... Brian tripped over a little bit. Might have been tripped. That could have been called, but regardless, Wayne Johnson dances into the end zone untouched. We'll see it again. Looked like Kentucky had a game going. You see Duckworth swinging around to the outside. Wilkin came over that way. Now you see McCluskey kind of lays down in front of Brian Williams. Blocking below the waist. If that was seen, that could have been called. It's six points for the Bulldogs. And they lead 26 to nothing. Today's game is brought to you by Coors, the beer with a difference worth as our spotter Tim Anderson just pointed out, the sunshine peeking through the overcast skies at Sanford Stadium. Probably hits it into the end zone again, and Kentucky will bring it out here to the 20 with 15 seconds left in the third quarter. And Georgia has really laid it on. They were leading it the half by a score of 10 to nothing. Scored 16 points in the third quarter. A 26-yard Crumbly field goal after the UK fumbly fumbled, and uh, Worley came back with a nine-yard TD run, and then Wayne Johnson with that 47-yard run. 16 points in the third quarter for the Bulldogs. Here's Ransdell. Completes it to Burbage out at the 30-yard line. I think he had one foot out of bounds when he caught the ball, but that will be complete right close to a first down. And nine seconds remain in the third quarter. So Bill Roundsville now has completed three out of eight passes for about 16 yards. Just inches short. And the bright sunshine peeking through the clouds in Athens, Georgia now. It was supposed to be sunshiny all day today, but we awakened to overcast skies here. That's Burbage in motion to the top of the screen. Ransville to Higgs. Higgs for the first down, out to the 37-yard line. That'll be the last play of the third quarter. Clock stops with one second left to move the chains, but as soon as they move the, move the chain, as soon as they move them up there, that'll be the end of the quarter. They'll start the clock again. Georgia leading 26 to nothing. You see the Fans enjoying the sunshine over on the banks here at Sanford Stadium in Athens. We'll be ready for the fourth and final quarter. 1986 Goodwill Games, Superstation, WTBS. Georgia led 13-0 at halftime, but exploded in the third quarter. After three quarters, Georgia has 353 yards of total offense. University of Kentucky only 112. Ransdell completes it to the 46-yard line to tight end number 80, Mark Wheeler. In that third quarter, Georgia threw one pass, and there's the ankle of Michael Willis, number 16, being worked on as a sprained ankle. Inflatable cast is what you see them doing with his ankle there. They threw one pass? One pass. And it was intercepted? Quarter. That's right. That's correct. Well, some folks might be wondering why Bill Ransdell is in, still in there at quarterback uh, now that this game is kind of out of reach. And I think that uh, you got to feel like right now Kentucky's playing for pride. They have to start forming up right now to get ready for the rest of the season. I mean, this has been embarrassing for them the last seven quarters. Michigan back out in front of Indiana, 15-12, and a real close one, second quarter. Arkansas way out over Houston, 24-3. Notre Dame leading Southern Cal, the classic matchup. First quarter score, Navy over Pitt, 7 0 Ivy Joe Hunter now, and then running back for Kentucky, just ran the ball. Here's Derry with the pass reception and a gain of about four to the midfield spot. Sandy Loy with the stop. Chris Derry. Here comes Waters. Look at him get off the ball. Now, Waters cannot have his hands up there around the head of Vernon Johnson. Now, in, uh, in an attempt to fight back, Johnson holds him. 
but you cannot have your head hands up around the head of an offensive lineman there. Second down seven from the 49. Kentucky moving the ball a little bit here. Here comes the Georgia Blitz. Ransville running away from everything. Tim complete. He tried to get it to the tight end, but excellent coverage by Miles Smith on tight end Mark Wheeler. Ransville running for his life. Had to throw the opposite way, too. Penalty marker is down the far side of the field. The second down seven. 13-16 to go in this ball game. Zero 26. Kentucky nothing. Probably something that as you watch the penalty marked off against Georgia, out to the 45 of the Bulldogs. Offside. Might mention here that Kentucky opened the season losing to Bowling Green, 26, uh, 30 to 26, but then beat Tulane, Cincinnati, and Clemson, and Mississippi State. So the Tulane Cincinnati wins you'd expect Kentucky to get. Clemson was a little bit of a surprise at the time, although we now know the Tigers are struggling. And the Mississippi State 33 to 19 told everybody that Kentucky is probably for real. But then no score for Kentucky against LSU last week, and they have not been able to score in this game. Higgs, nowhere. Right at the 40. Ball popped loose. I'm not sure who. It may be Georgia's ball. It is Georgia's ball. And by the way, that was the freshman 32, Ivy Joe Hunter, who was in there running the ball. Freshman from Gainesville, Florida. So it was not Higgs. It was Ivy Joe Hunter, number 32, who fumbled the ball. I'm not sure who they're giving it to. Ivy Joe Hunter sticks it on up in there. The ball came loose. It belongs now. They're going to say it's Georgia. It remained in the possession of Kentucky. So we got two signals down there. It was Hunter and fumbled it. Well, Kentucky maintained possession. Good hit by Jake Richardson. It'll be third down two. Ransdell complete the pass to the 40-yard line. Tony Black covering number four, Cornell Burbage. Didn't have to back up on that. I didn't exactly get the uh, signal on it, except they, except that they said the ball remained in Kentucky. All you folks at home, smile. We're taking your picture. Good job by Cornell Burbage coming back to the ball on that last play. Ransdell almost a desperate attempt. Burbage, nice catch. First down, 10, Wildcat. Burbage in motion. 46 nothing Bulldogs lead. A lot of open room for Ransdell here. He's going to run for the first down or close to it. Goes down right at the 30-yard line. With Jake Richardson with the tackle on 99. And you know Jerry Claiborne takes a deep breath when Bill Ransdell does that, but that's the kind of courage that young man has. Remember, he had broken ribs and a collapsed lung. Not exactly an insignificant injury that he's playing with. And he has displayed that kind of courage throughout his career. I'm not sure here that uh, the discretion might not be the better part of valor. You know, if they get him hurt here, then they're in trouble for the rest of the year. This game is down the chute. On a second down one. The freshman. Ivy Joe Hunter, I don't know if he got it or not. Looks like they hit him right there before he got to the line of scrimmage. May not have been a first down. Could bring up third down in short yardage and does. Aaron Chubb, Chubb was the stop that time along with John Little for Georgia. Loss on the play. Ten minutes and 53 seconds remaining in this game. From Athens, the Bulldogs 1-1-1 one, one, and one coming into the game. And the Kentucky Wildcats came in here with a 1-1 one and one mark in the SEC. Two losses. It's going to be tough to win the conference championship. There you see the distance. The ball has to cross that 30-yard line. Here's Ransdell on the play fake. It's complete to his tight end, Wheeler. He did not get into the end zone. Short by about a foot. Miles Smith covering on the play, but a great catch and a nice throw and a good call. Mark Wheeler with the reception. So Kentucky challenging, and there's a little snap coming back, and you have to say, is it Ransdell that's causing it? I don't think there's any question about it. If there's going to be any snap, it's going to come from this young man right here, and his right arm and his leadership ability puts the ball right on the money to Mark Wheeler. Miles Smith, as we mentioned earlier, hobbled a little bit by an ankle injury being left in the dirt, gets there to save a touchdown. Hand off to 
by E.J. Hunter. Penalty marker down. Touchdown is signaled, but there is a penalty marker on the play. Here's the signal from Robert Hile. Offsides, Georgia. Touchdown counts. Kentucky has broken their now seven and a half quarter scoring drop. Points on the board. Offenses are always embarrassed by that zero up there after the school name. You just don't like to see that happening, even if it's three to nothing. They're on the board now, and maybe they can get something going the rest of this quarter, Bob. No question about it. Bill Ransdell has come in here and really made a difference offensively for this Kentucky team. It's amazing what, a, what one person can do in terms of spirit and leadership. And as you mentioned earlier, Tim, we knew that about them. Kentucky going for two now. We knew it about Bill Ransdell. Couldn't find anybody, and it remains 26 to 6. Flag. There is a penalty marker on the play. It is in the end zone. Let's see what the call is going to be. Here comes Robert I.A. again. Holding against Georgia. They get an opportunity to try that again. Robert I.A., a left-handed official. You know, to show you what kind of fans the Georgia football fans are, I met a guy in the lobby of the hotel, Jay Rabin, who recognized I.A. when he walked into the uh, lobby and knew him as the left-handed referee. How about that? That's being knowledgeable. That's the tight end, Mark Wheeler, who's shaken up in the end zone. Looks to be okay. Yeah, he's fine. And so that'll be a penalty of half the distance, which puts it back there at about the yard and a half mark. There's uh, Ken Fouts, our director. I wish Ken would stay in the truck, don't you, Tim? It makes me nervous. Like the pilot coming back to say, I hope you're enjoying the flight. Yeah. But I do like the new mustache and glasses, Ken. Did I mention that fan's name, Jay Rabin? Yes. Yeah, good. Because I was impressed by that. Now that's knowledgeable. He didn't know who I was. <laughs> Ransdo! picked off by Georgia intercepted in the end zone so the two-point conversion attempt doesn't work Tony Flack with the ball for Georgia and just couldn't get the two points out of it Georgia continues to lead 26 to 6 with 10 18 remaining in this ball game this is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television We change your oil and filter, lubricate the chassis, fill all vitals. Well, has really put some life back into this Kentucky team. Probably too late for this game, although 10 minutes and 18 seconds remain. But he completed seven passes in a row on that drive. Got the touchdown. So no question that that's been a big difference in this Kentucky offense. Five-yard penalty on the kickoff. So Kentucky kicking off five yards further up. That penalty, of course, occurred on the touchdown. And here's the scoring drive. 457 the time of possession. 90 yards. 12 plays. An excellent drive by the Kentucky Wildcats. Good job by Bill Ransdell directing that drive down the field. Got a little bit of a run going, but mostly it was his arm, his ability to buy some time, throw the ball. And they went with two tight ends, Bob. What they're trying to do is give Ransdell maximum protection. Uh, Burbage running the routes, trying to get open on Flack and on Willis. Now Wayne Johnson continues quarterbacking for Georgia. Here's the fullback, gets a couple of yards out to about the 21-yard line. That's Keith Henderson, number 30, getting up off the bottom of the tackle. There's the Kentucky mascot, who frankly is just flat <laughs> uh, disgusted with it all. He says, I've been cheering my heart out, you know, and what have you guys given me but six points? Isn't it his job, though, to keep yeah, that's his right. chin I up? Mean, we need <laughs> Come on, Wild Manufacturing cat. enthusiasm. <laughs> Second down eight. Bill Randall having a talk to him. Here's the pitch no. to Worley. Big hit about the 25-yard line. John Dumble, 260 pounds hitting. Not many guys a lot bigger than Worley, but Dumble is. Yep. Dumble, Durano. <laughs> There's Ugga Four in his fire hydrant. <laughs> he feels like he's put in a tough day and earned a rest, I guess. You gotta get John Casey, the strength coach, coach for Georgia, after him. Third down three. 
Georgia Bowl at the 25 yard line. Wayne Johnson. Throwing on the run, incomplete. Georgia will have to turn this ball over. Johnson's first pass is 0 for 1. Georgia threw only one pass in the entire third quarter. It was intercepted, although Georgia scored 16 points in that quarter, and Johnson just threw his first of the day. Georgia has rushed 50 out of 61 times today. There's Brian Williams back to take the Chris Carpenter punt. He'll be standing just inside his own 40-yard line. 26 to 6. Georgia leading Kentucky, but Kentucky may have found their missing offense. But in terms of the SEC title race for Jerry Claiborne, it may be too late as this will drop Kentucky to one and two unless they stage a miracle nine-minute comeback here and pick up a quick 20 points on Georgia. Carpenter with a beautiful punt. Great hang time. Leading for the fair catch at the 36. Not bad field position. This will be the sixth time today that Kentucky has started outside their 35-yard line, the 39-yard punt. There was a flag in the play. Somebody may have run inside that imaginary two-yard circle to interfere with the fair catch. We'll see if that's the call. Blue skies, beautiful day in Athens. Personal foul, they'll tag that Personal on here and, and give uh, Kentucky once again really good field position. Kentucky started drives outside the 40-yard line of Kentucky on several occasions, and a few they've started inside Georgia territory today, and they're going to have an opportunity to do that again. But until Bransville came into the game, Kentucky could get no points on the board. There it is, 15-yarder, put it at the 48-yard line of the Bulldogs, so only 48 yards away from ankle of Georgia cornerback Michael Willis, who was injured earlier in the ball game and already depleted secondary for Georgia. They've brought the injured Miles Smith back in, playing a little hurt, and moved Tony Flack back to corner. Isn't it tough? Mike, that's the only time you get any air time when you're a defensive back. You get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now on this telecast, defensive backs definitely get their air time, Tim. I you, mentioned you take good care of the defensive back. <laughs> and let's see if they stay with their... Oh, they're back to two wide receivers, Bob. First down, 10, Kentucky at the 48-yard line of Georgia. That's Burbage in motion. Ramsdell, who's completed seven out of seven on his last passes. Eight out of eight now. Throws it out there. 287, Martin Pennington, and Pennington down hard at the original line of scrimmage. Michigan, Indiana, 15-15 at the half. That's the most points scored on Michigan all year in one game, and Indiana did it in the half. Look at that. North Carolina shutting out Florida State. Ninth break, 10 nothing at half. That's a surprise. Florida State scored 76 points last week. Florida, 22. Virginia Tech, 10 in the third quarter. Cincinnati meeting Boston College. Oh, where, oh, where did you go, Doug Flutie? Tony Mangrum in there for Georgia. Five defensive backs. Ransom. down 43 yard line Couldn't get it going that was second down 10 and get third down five now waters with the tackle mangrum has really been a versatile player for georgia this year lined up at tailback for him last year they had a problem on second in the secondary as you mentioned earlier lack of depth and experience uh, he's come over on defense and done an admirable job Although Bill Lewis is talking to him right now about the job he did not do on the tight end in the last play. Third down five, Kentucky at the 43 of Georgia. Bransville under a lot of pressure. Down he goes, number 56, Bill Mitchell. Oh, Ransdell did not have a prayer. Georgia blitzes so very well. An obvious situation for it on the third and five. Loss of eight brings up fourth and 13, moves the ball inside Kentucky territory. And that's what happened on many of the Kentucky good field position starts previously in this ball game. That's just that this Georgia Bulldog defense just rose up and stopped them. Fake. Pass is complete. Number 13 with the ball is Gary Sexton, and Sexton's going to come up short of the first down. Out at the 42-yard line. Why not? Worth a try? And there, number 76 on the left side for the University of Kentucky's Vernon Johnson, who's had such a tough day against Greg Waters today. He has a right to be a little bit tired of the Kentucky offensive line. He's done a good job the second half, though. We haven't heard from Muddy quite as much. 
there was a string of plays there that uh, that brought Vern more attention than he wanted, I'm sure. Buddy Waters probably just got tired. He was so active for a little while. He just dominated Georgia the game for a couple of series. We have 6.41 remaining in this ball game. Georgia's ball. They lead Kentucky 26 to 6. Jerry Claiborne, happy to see his quarterback Bill Ransdell back in there, but obviously he must still be concerned about this Kentucky offense. Kentucky came into here with an overall record of 4 and 2, unless something spectacular happens. We'll go out of here 4 and 3, and Kentucky still has some pretty tough ball games coming up. After this, they get a little bit of a break with a 1AA team, is Tennessee State, but then it's Vanderbilt, Florida, and Tennessee for the Wildcats. And Georgia running the ball up the middle. We'll see a lot more of the running now. David McCluskey tackled by Jeff Kramer. Georgia's been extremely effective running the ball today. You know, I don't got to give a lot of credit to Anderson and those boys up front. Perry and Burroughs, Stevens and Strozier opened, opened up some holes against a real good defense against the run. On a second down, seven. Lars Tate close to the first down. Excellent acceleration. Tate and Worley, McCluskey Henderson, have gone all the way at the two back positions. They've just been swapping in and out of there. The two fullbacks, McCluskey and Henderson, and the, the uh, two tailbacks, Worley and Tate. There you see Sue Stanley, one of the uh, few women trainers in college football, working on Tom Ritchie. Happened to see her at the hotel as we were waiting for the plane to arrive the Kentucky plane a couple hours late last night and uh, she said it doesn't make any difference if you're a man or a woman the kids just want to get treated and she gets them better and gets back on the field first down Georgia 555 remaining in the game from Sanford Stadium in Athens 26 to 6 Georgia leading Kentucky we're talking about who Kentucky had to play there at the end of the year Georgia has got a pretty tough schedule the rest of the way also. We'll talk about that in just a moment. On first down, 10 to the 48-yard line. Here's a pitch to Lars Tate. Hurdling his way to about the 43-yard line. Georgia, after this game, will play Tulane here for homecoming. Then Florida, then Auburn, then Georgia Tech. And believe me, those are three tough opponents all the way down the stretch. The Florida and the Auburn game, of course, critical for Georgia to maintain their drive toward a potential SEC championship. A tie is going to come back to haunt them probably. Second down five from the 43 Bulldogs. Lane in motion. McCluskey to the 39. Close to the first down. Mazza with the tackle. One question that you might be asking yourself at this point is, how did this Georgia football team end up in a tie with Vanderbilt? And uh, in watching that film, the Georgia offense did not have the ball for much of the game. They uh, went, took a halftime lead of 13 to 10, and then Vanderbilt held the ball for eight and a half minutes. Georgia had three plays. Vanderbilt had the ball for four and a half minutes, and and just uh, Vanderbilt did as good a job as anybody that I've ever seen against the Georgia defense. Here's Lars Tate to the 27-yard line. First down, Georgia. It was third one, and now it's first and 10. 425 to go in this game. And Georgia just adding up all kinds of yardage. A quick recap here. Worley has 29 running the ball. Henderson, 74. McCluskey, 62. Tate, 86 after that run. Johnson, Wayne Johnson, the quarterback, 47. And James Jackson, the quarterback, 50 against a team that's number four in the nation against the ru rush. So that's a good effort. Georgia, 347 yards running, and Kentucky's been allowing an average of 74 yards a game running. Here comes Tate again to the 22-yard line. Well, he certainly had his share of carries today. That's his 13th, and remember, he's playing with a sore hand. Didn't even practice much this week, showing a lot of toughness. Lars Tate, the sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana. They've had some great line coaches here at Georgia, too. You know, in four years, they've had four coaches. Wayne McDuffie, of course, offensive coordinator uh, at Florida State. Now Alex Gibbs with Denver. Eddie Williamson last year, head coach at BMI. And now Joe Hollis running the show on the offensive line. 
Here comes Fred Lane running out of the tailback position. Normally a wide receiver. He gets the first down for Georgia. They practiced Fred Lane at tailback because of the injuries. Tate was hurt. They didn't know if he could play. Tron Jackson is injured and definitely wasn't able to play today. They had, had to look at Mangrum and also Lane. And so I guess since he practiced there, Vince Dooley said we have the game in hand. Let's give the youngster an opportunity to run the ball a little bit. That he can do. Now you see number 45, Kevin Jackson, putting on his hat. You may see him at fullback. So McCluskey and Fred Lane, the running backs. McCluskey, not much this time. Inside the 15 to about the 13. Clock down to three minutes and counting down. Georgia leads 26 to 6. So the Bulldogs record is now going to go to 2-1-1 one, and one in the SEC. And Jerry Claiborne's Wildcats will drop to 1-2 and two in the conference race. It's possible this year, and most people think so, that it could be that some team with two losses could win the SEC. It's never happened before. The worst record ever was Alabama many years ago with a 4-0-3 oh, record. One team did win it with a tie. Here's Freddie Lane. What a good job running out of the tailback position down to the 11-yard line. Clock counting, 2:21 and counting. 26-6 Georgia. By the way, a lot of those SEC fans who wonder if there is a tie, six teams had one loss coming into this game, so there's a good chance for a tie somewhere down the line. If there is a tie, Florida not eligible, of course. The Sugar Bowl selects the team that goes to the Sugar Bowl, not the SEC. And it doesn't depend on who went last. The Sugar Bowl simply makes a selection. And I might add to that that uh, normally the Sugar Bowl would pick a team who is ranked higher in the national rankings. Here's Freddie Lane. Yep. Close to the first down for Georgia. Inside the 10 to about the 7, Brian Williams with the stop. Clock to 140 and counting down in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Freddie just found out there's a little more traffic as a running back than as a wide receiver. <laughs> yeah, where are all these guys? I'm yeah. not used to seeing these fellas. He's short of the first down by just about a, about a foot and a half. They may, they're may they going to bring it in and measure, as a matter of fact. Clock stops at a minute 34. So, Tim, as you start looking at this SEC race, Alabama and LSU all have records of 2-1 and one going into today's action. Auburn is 1-1 one and one in the SEC going into today. Georgia now will be 2-1-1. One and one. Kentucky falls to 1-2. and two. So, I'll tell you, it's anybody's ballgame. A lot of people talk about Auburn, but they have the toughest schedule going down the stretch. I yeah, think. they do. In Tennessee, in terms of schedule, Tennessee has the biggest advantage, probably, but without Tony Robinson, it's going to be... I think it's going to be difficult for him. It's going to be a struggle. Kevin Jackson, the freshman from Warner Robins, Georgia, carrying the ball for Georgia. Williams with the tackle. Clock down to 108 and counting. As Georgia just really running it out here, not necessarily trying to just run the ball into the end zone. They will continue to probably run another play or two. Well, what do you think, Tim? Want to make a prediction? <laughs> I think Auburn's got going things going in the right direction. And I think that uh, I think that it's going to come down to the Auburn Alabama game. There's Freddie Lane. He is short of the end zone down to about the three yard line clock to 36 35. Well I think I agree with you that Tennessee looks good schedule wise but they lost their quarterback. LSU also has a has a schedule that that would tend to think that they've got a pretty good shot. LSU plays Ole Miss then Alabama which will be a really good game on November 9th in Baton Rouge then Mississippi State and then Notre Dame and Tulane. So really Ole Miss Alabama Mississippi State they also have an excellent opportunity. Probably the last play of the game. <laughs> penalty markers go down everywhere and no touchdown was signaled by the run by Fred Lane and the clock down to seven seconds they, they call just, this forward lateral or that's what they may call it that's it my favorite officials signal you have to have good dexterity and good flexibility to be an official <laughs> I probably could not have made that signal I, I don't think, think get it back there. Did he signal that with his left hand? Remember, as you pointed out earlier, with your incredible research, that this is the left-handed <laughs> official. Now, can you? Now, he uses his hey, right hand. Good, ambidextrous. Loss of downs. There he shows you use of both arms, then the right, then the left. That was good. Robert I.A. Hope, you, hope you'll have a sense of humor about us kidding around about it being a left-hander. You don't ever want to get a policeman or a referee upset with you. Learn that. 
Seven seconds remaining in the game. Georgia 26 to 6. These Bulldog fans wanting more. Penalty marker down. Georgia jumped offside. Clock down to two to one. And down to double zero. And the game can end on a penalty if against the offense and is going to do just that. And Georgia has defeated Kentucky 26 to 6 here today to go to 2-1-1 in the SEC and remain.